Hi, it's Jamie with Kentucky Extension, and today we're out in the garden and we're talking about gourds, one of my favorite things to grow. I love gourds. There's so many different varieties and such a wide range of colors and shapes and textures and stuff. And personally, I think they're so much fun in the fall with all the pumpkins and stuff like that that I really get a kick out of. So we're going to talk about the different types of gourds and things today and kind of show you them in a relatively early stage of their growth before we have a ton of actual gourds. And I think I have one on the property somewhere. We'll show you one of the colorful ones that does have a few fruits on it. But we'll do a part two to this gourd video and come back later and show you all the variety and stuff at the end of the season and also talk about some tips for drying and storing some of this type of gourd, which are those hard-shelled gourds that are great for crafts, the big bushel gourds, it's that type of gourd with a really thick shell, no color much, and um, we're, I'm growing both types, so I wanna tell you about each. This is the super vigorous, longer seasoned Laginaria group. Laginaria is simply the Latin name for the hard shelled gourds. Most of these would hail, hail from Africa or other really, really warm climates. So that means they're very long season. Uh, this particular one is called Cannonball. You can't really appreciate it yet, but the uh, fruit is going to be perfectly spherical in a four to six inch ball. I'm excited about them as outdoor Christmas ornaments and other things, but just perfectly round little balls of gourds that you can, uh, these are used in crafts with like wood burning and painting and all sorts of stuff. But they range from that, um, in the background it looks just like these, but over there I have one tiny, probably the smallest hard shell gourd I know of, called Nigerian Dwarf Bottle. And it will form the traditional little two hump gourd like we think of for birdhouses, but it only gets about three inches tall. This is a perfect size to use for Christmas ornaments and that sort of thing. This one I told you has the round ones. And there are many, many different shapes of Laginarias. You've probably seen the giant bushel gourds, the dipper gourds, and these were actually used in pioneer times. Dipper gourds were called that because people made functioning dippers from them. The bushel gourds to the Native Americans and other cultures served as storage. I mean, you've got some, some of these things will get 24 inch in diameter and just be aware there's so much longer season. The little tiny, um, bottle gourd I've told you about is only 90 days. We can all grow that without even thinking about it. This one is 120, which is still plenty doable, but some of those massive ones get as long as 180 days. And that's really pushing the limits of our growing season here in Kentucky. So for those long season ones, you may want to start things indoors early. And I started these very early, but only when the really high heat hit, did they start to grow like this? And let's talk about growth. All gourd vines are outrageously vigorous. However, the little small colorful gourds are far less vigorous than this. Some of these beasts will grow 30 feet. And you can see me fighting futilely here because I'm trying to train these up this elaborate mess I built of tomato cages, and old fence wire just to give them support. But if you look down here, you can see I pull these up off the ground every two to three days. It's been a day or two since I've been here, and you can just look and see how much running has occurred. So they are serious growers. Give them space or literally stay on them every day to force them to grow vertically. A little later in the season, I'll fight this less because once most of it gets up here, they'll stay up there and stop running at the base so much, but it can wear you out. Just trying to keep the vines out of pathways and things. And if you have acreage, just plant them and let them run through the weeds. It'll work. Um, here's one of my favorite ones from years ago I grew. This is called Marenka or Caveman's Club. It's longer season. I love these weird little shapes. I have seen swans crafted from these, geese, all sorts of beautiful birds, and they're just cool. This one I just keep hanging on the porch because I think it's so neat looking 
and it causes visitors to ask lots of questions. So we're going to pause here and go over and look at some baby plants of the shorter season colorful gourds and then show you some more and we'll talk a little bit more about that type of gourd in just a second. Here we are in a different part of the garden, but with more gourds. Yes, there is a few of these um, ones you're familiar with we just talked about, the Lagenarius. This is the giant bushel gourd. I'm not confident I'll get them to full size. And if you, even if you get them to full size, they need more time to thicken that rind and really get to full storage potential. So these big ones are an experiment, but I have them growing here above what I call normal or regular gourds, those little colorful ones. And if you haven't really delved into researching gourds and you think that these things are all the little, I don't know, round thing with a neck and that's what you've got offered to you, you're so sadly mistaken. There are so many weird, beautiful, funky ones of these now. This is a mixture of Gremlins Gourd, which is my absolute favorite. All kinds of weird shapes, acorns, turbans, wings, um, and about cantaloupe size. Some of them will get bigger, some are smaller, but these are chunky, in-your-face big gourds with some of the brightest colors you'll ever find. Neon yellows and bright oranges and greens and things. There are also mixed in here some uh, daisy gourds, which are a little flat gourd with stripes that resemble a flower. I have some of the necked gourds, the little things like autumn wings is another wonderful one. And it's a long neck gourd with winged appendages or little projections that stick out of it with lumps all over it. So I really like the bumpy ones. Both gremlins and that um, the autumn wings will have bumps and lumps and things which make things really interesting. So there's a whole lot more of them in different shapes and sizes. I did want to point out to you the difference. I don't have flowers. These are a later planting. So these don't have flowers, but there is a distinction between gourds in that the colorful ones have big orange flowers or yellow flowers that are open during the daylight hours and pollinated by bumblebees and things. These white flowers on the Lagenarias are open in the evening, stay open till uh, mid-morning the next day, depending on the heat, and those are pollinated by moths and things that fly at night, and sometimes there's enough bees out early to catch them on the morning end as well. But those are some contrasts. You might also notice slightly different leaves. This is more heart-shaped, a little darker green. This one has some lobes and some other stuff going on. So those are two of the distinctions between these main categories of gourds, but I think I can find some almost finished gourds here to show you and then of course in part two we'll have lots of gourds to show you. Here's one of the yellow orange blooms I was telling you guys about on the colorful gourds, the peepo varieties, and I want to just talk about this for a minute. I told you they were pollinated during the day. Bumblebees, oddly, are one of the best pollinators of gourds and squash. So as we think about honeybees being in decline, many of our other native bee species do have pollination roles. They don't always serve the same function, but these are primarily bumblebees and larger bees. And part of the reason I'm getting such good gourd set is I've tolerated and allowed a nest of bumblebees in the wall just around the corner. But here are, this was a volunteer plant that came up from seed early from last year. And you can see some of these colorful gourds. This is actually a generation removed from autumn wings. Autumn wings typically has longer necks and wider color range, but you can see a little bit of the reminiscent wings on the actual autumn wings variety. They're much more pronounced, but very colorful. And in part two of our gourd videos, we will show you a million different shapes and sizes. But gourds are generally very forgiving. They are tolerant of leaner soils that aren't perfect, but just like any plant on earth, the better their growing conditions, the larger the gourds, the more colorful the gourds will be. But you, with gourds, you don't want to go too lush, too rich, too much fertilization. They appreciate a tiny bit, but too much of that can lead to lots of vines and very little fruit. So that's one of the reasons they were so popular in the hills of Kentucky and things is that those soils were generally not the most fertile, rich bottomland soils on mountainsides and things. So these things don't ask for a lot other than a lot of sun. So I hope this has been helpful. We're generally gonna plant gourds in Kentucky, at least the colorful ones, sometime about mid-May. The other ones like it hotter, 
you may want to start inside and um, bring them out. But they're very easy to grow. They do like water because they don't have to have it and they'll grow gourds almost no matter what. But if you want big, beautiful gourds with the best color, do provide some water. So I hope this has been helpful for those of you who grow gourds or are interested in gourds. And in part two, we'll cover other aspects like how you dry them. These colorful ones are short-term storage only. Those large Lagenaria types can last for decades if properly cured. We'll show you how to clean them up, how to wreck them in the field. There's lots of steps to that hard shell gourd. So that'll all be in part two. Hope it's been helpful. I hope you'll consider growing some of these beautiful things. And if it's too late, which it's a little late this year to be showing them at this stage, but our local farmers and producers at our farmer's market will have beautiful assortments for you to purchase. And then next year you can grow those. Most of these are open pollinated. I think gremlins and some of these could be hybrids. But generally speaking, you can save seeds from gourds. You may not get exactly what you had the year before, but they're very easy just to keep seeds and plant them over like that. You just have to watch for degeneration. This is one generation or two away from autumn wings, and we're already losing the wings. They do tend to get more primitive and more plain after several years of growing from seed. Jamie Dockery with Kentucky Extension talking about gourds. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do, and stay tuned for part two where we'll tell you what to do in the fall.